Hey, how you doing? This is Vito from up here in Northwest Wyoming, and you are watching Trucker Josh and Diesel. Stay tuned for a good show. Good morning, everybody. We're here at this rest area at the border of Ontario and Manitoba, the border of Eastern Canada and Western Canada. We're on the Eastern side. We'll have to keep our eyes out. I don't know what we're looking for. Nice people over here, nice people over here. All right, so this is technically Northwestern Ontario. Uh, so this, depending on who you talk to, they could still consider this part of Western Canada from like Thunder Bay or from Kenora West. Uh, depends who you talk to. I don't know, I'm just bugging you guys. I'm just, so I'm getting ready to go here, just resetting my fuel data on my truck, resetting my odometer. We have two days to get to the city of Toronto. I was gonna say the great city of, we'll just say the city of Toronto. We gotta deliver the stuff. Got two drops for them. Here we go. We've already got a reload coming out of Toronto back home. So we won't be there long. Just quickly sneak in and sneak out before they even know we're there. I've never actually, I've never stayed at this rest area. I told you that, right? Right on Trans Canada Highway, Highway 17. I've always seen this here. But uh, I figured I'd stop here. It's a nice lit parking lot with a nice warm, like, 24-hour uh, rest area here that you can go inside. Whereas everything from here to Dryden uh, isn't as nice of a place to stop overnight. So we're going through Northern Ontario in the winter time. So we're gonna have to remember to uh, make sure we have lots of washer fluid. It's a two-lane highway all the way, well, pretty much all the way close to Toronto, up to uh, up to Southern Ontario, anyway. So this is the little highway that connects the east with the west. Two days between the major civilization of eastern Canada and western Canada. Two days down this little road. I mean, there's some cities in between. There is. Uh, you know, we got Kenora, a little town up here. Uh, yeah, Thunder Bay is a small city. You got North Bay, Sudbury. Uh, but between Toronto and Winnipeg, which is the the gateway city to the west, they say. The first big cities you're heading to the, heading into Western Canada. There's, yeah, there's a two day drive between, between them. And there's, uh, I guess not enough traffic yet to merit a four lane road, because most people just travel through the US to get from east to west, because it's a lot faster, safer, and much better amenities. And hey, the Americans like it because we spend our money down there then. But uh, for commercial freight, unless if I'm traveling in Bond, which is a story for a different time, I have to travel through Canada. But uh, I know we're working on it right now so that I can take freight like this from Winnipeg to Toronto and go through, you know, like Minnesota, Michigan, Wisconsin, and go on the US side. Because the highways are bigger and safer down there, better truck stops, and like I said, I spend some money down in the US, they benefit off it too. And every road I drive on in the US, I have to pay uh, road taxes to the US as well so they, they benefit a lot having us down there and so do we because driving up on this little two-lane road isn't really the safest two days of driving especially in winter time and there's not much up here at all but it's gonna be fun it's nice and scenic this time of year is not as scenic because everything's sort of like dead for winter or sleeping but in summertime, this is a beautiful drive to go through northern Ontario. Continue on this road for 308 kilometers. Thanks, Karen. Always all about business. So, it's a nice day out. It's a nice day. I think I'll take the weasel with me. He needs his walk. But, uh, you know, either way, it doesn't matter what I do. I'm going to get... Uh, I'm gonna get those comments, right? If I leave him in the truck, people are gonna be like, why'd you leave him in the truck? He needs his he needs his exercise too. But if I take him with me, there's gonna be the other group that says, it's so cold, it's so cold, his paws are gonna be so cold. Why did you take him? Why didn't you leave him in the truck? You know what, it's my 
my judgment call. You know what? You're not here. I am. I think I'm going to take him with me, and if his paws start to get cold, well, then we'll come back to the truck right away. How about that? But I don't think they will, because it's it's not that cold today. Don't be fooled by the snow everywhere. It's all melting. It's actually quite a warm day, and the pavement soaks up the heat from the sun, right? And the pavement and sidewalks are actually pretty warm. I'm gonna go around the corner here to the Petro Pass truck stop, and we'll make our decision, our final judgment. You know what? I think Diesel's gonna stay in the truck and have a nap while I go for my walk. Now he's an indoor dog. His paws aren't accustomed to the cold. And he gets his exercise running around at home with Chevy. It's just then we can uh, bring him inside right away once he gets cold, right? But if I go for a walk here, uh, it'll take us a little while to get back to the truck if he gets cold. I don't know. I don't know. I, mean, I, can t I take him for a shorter walk. It's just now I want to go for a longer walk. The highlighted route. No, Mandy, I'm, I'm... Karen, sorry. Dang it, still calling her Mandy! But now I want to I want to make this a bit of a longer, focused walk. So uh, we'll take a shorter walk with Diesel later to let him out. But I, I just don't want his paws yet. He's not used to it. He's an indoor pup. I think I'd rather face the people saying, hey, why didn't you take him on the walk? Rather than the people that said, why'd you take him on the walk? He's gonna freeze his paws. So I made my decision. We're gonna park right over here. And Diesel, you are going to guard the truck like a good boy. Like a super good boy. Or you're just gonna nap. Either way, either way. I'll be back in about an hour. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't bring diesel with. It's a little colder than I thought it was. The sun is warming up the pavement and stuff and melting the snow off the road, but I think salt has a little bit to do with that too, so diesel would have been pretty cold on this walk. We just got started here, so. We'll find our way into town. And these walks are usually around about an hour. We'll see how I feel. Well, when your walk starts off right by a Chevy dealership, you know it's gonna be a good day. You know, I've been really looking into electric pickup trucks. I had no idea how far the market had come already. Have you ever heard of the, the company called Rivian? They make an electric pickup truck that has a 490 plus mile range. That's 780 plus kilometers on one charge. That means you can drive from Winnipeg to Regina and partially back on one charge. Four wheel drive, pickup, 11,000 pound towing capacity, 1,700 pound payload capacity. Four wheel drive, each wheel has its own electric motor. Very interesting, very interesting. I really wish that Chevy would introduce an electric Silverado, fully electric, maybe in the future. My pickup I'll have probably for another 10 years or so yet. I'll drive it till it gets old and then I'll wanna get a new truck. At which point maybe I can get solar panels and a battery bank installed in my garage so that, you know it can charge up those battery banks during the day and then at night I can charge my vehicles in the garage using that solar power that it collected during the day. And I'll have free gas for life. Now yes, the Rivian trucks are not the only electric pickup trucks on the market now. There's actually quite a few. My online friend Bobby Waite, you know who you are, sent me an email and got me actually pretty interested in the electric pickup market. I have my eye on it. I don't think I would buy one just yet. I wanna wait, you know, like I said, about 10 years, see where the market goes and let them get all the bugs worked out of it. But yeah, if you have a solar power battery bank and stuff in your garage where you can charge your vehicles off of, you're literally filling up your vehicle every night for free. 
and you can get to Regina on a single charge. Now, a single charge would cost in Manitoba about five bucks. I don't know how long it would take. Which way are we going? I thought this went further than this. Are we at a dead end? Huh, guess, guess we'll go this way. Okay. But yeah, the, the full charge, however long it would take, costs five bucks. You can get to Regina, 600 kilometers away. 400 miles away. In my pickup, it has similar towing capacity, similar payload capacity. I would have to fill up at least, at least once on the way there, because I have about a 400 kilometer, 500 kilometer range, and that would cost me about $90 with today's fuel prices. At what, a dollar ten per liter? So, five bucks in the electric pickup. 90 bucks plus probably over a hundred dollars with a gas pickup now my pickup was about forty five thousand dollars and it was a pretty basic model but if you get a middle of the road silver robber you're probably looking at what fifty fifty five thousand dollars plus all the fuel you use so the rivian trucks they're about eighty thousand dollars canadian right now so it's an expensive truck but if you think about it, when you're paying the truck off over four to five years, how much fuel would you burn? So you take $50,000 for the truck, add on all the fuel you would burn, and you're probably sitting at over $100,000 in five years. Or you could just get the electric truck, invest in the solar panels and battery bank in your garage, and spend less in five years. I don't know. Uh, they've got a long way to go. I'm not ready to buy one yet. Like I said, my pickup, it'll be good for the next 10 years. It wouldn't make sense for me to buy a new one right now. But I can dream. I dream all the time. I'm a dreamer. So, I don't know. I guess we'll see. But you could be wondering, Trucker Josh, where are you going to charge your pickup on the road, Trucker Josh? Well, like I was telling you in a vlog not too long ago, when I was coming through Northern Ontario here, Canada is actually building electric charging stations coast to coast across the country. They're starting on the main Trans-Canada Highway and they're actually spreading the infrastructure to every gas station across the country. So you'll be able to charge your vehicle up anywhere you can buy gasoline to gas up your vehicle. So they're making it pretty easy and convenient, but they got a long way to go. A lot of infrastructure needs to be built. A lot of bugs need to be worked out of these vehicles. That's why, again, I say, in about 10 years, when I'm ready for a new vehicle, ready for a new truck, that gives them 10 years to get all the infrastructure built and get all the bugs worked out of all of these electric pickups. And then maybe, I would consider it. I mean, even if I have to wait until it's my retirement vehicle, right? Way down the road in life. It'd be a great retirement vehicle, right? You pay for it once, and then you never have to put gas in it again. You just hook it up to your charging bank that gathers all the solar energy during the day in your garage. And you always got a full tank of gas. What do you guys think? I mean, I can see a future in it for sure. It's not there yet, not there. It's not far enough along for me to buy one yet. But they are definitely making progress. And it's, it's good to see because for so long, these electric vehicles like the Teslas, They've been geared towards city people. You know, they got shorter range. They're cars, which would get stuck out in the countryside where we live. Where we live, it's a necessity to have four wheel drive. And we need a pickup. I need to haul stuff around. We don't get garbage service. So I have to haul my own garbage away. I can't do that in a car. I need a pickup for that. You know, we have the travel trailer. Sometimes we want to go camping. We need a pickup that can pull that. So far, the Rivian can do everything I would need it to do. I just think it needs, needs time. I wanna see how it performs in the winter. But from what I've seen, they've tested it up in the cold already, so. Bobby was saying the same thing. Well, Bobby was saying this to me. He said, well, your gas vehicle gets worse fuel economy in the winter when it's cold, doesn't it? 
Same thing with electric vehicles. So the range goes down by what, about 20%, I think he said, in the really, really cold days. But and gasoline does the same thing. I don't know. I don't know. I'd love to know what you guys think down below in the comments section. Do you have an electric vehicle? And if you don't, would you ever consider it if all the proper infrastructure was built and they made it convenient and affordable? So this specific pickup I'm talking about, they also make an SUV, which is pretty nice. Uh, the brand is Rivian. So R-I-V-I-A-N, just like it sounds, Rivian. And I believe their manufacturing plant is based in Indiana, USA. So go check them out. This is the third church I've passed on my short walk already. What does it say? St. Joseph's Catholic Church. Looks like a pretty, oh, not, not that old, but you know, Catholic churches always seem to be the, the most beautiful buildings. You know what I'm saying? They always have the nicest churches, it seems like. Beautiful. Well, technically, it's just a building. The church is the people. Worldwide, there's only one church, but there's many different church buildings, different denominations. The Catholic denomination seems to always have the, have the nicest buildings. So this, this is what a Canadian town looks like in Northern Ontario, I guess Northwestern Ontario. You want to be specific? This is what most Canadian towns look like. If you're from the United States, pretty much the same thing with snow and cold. Lots of cold. Yeah, it's probably a good thing I didn't take you on that one, Diesel. On the way out into town, it was a beautiful day. The sun was shining, it was nice and warm. I didn't realize that the wind was pushing me along. On the way back, I was going against that winter wind. A little bit chilly. But we uh, were back and we made it, so uh, we walked a total of 5.91 kilometers. Took an hour and seven minutes, burnt 428 calories, 7,697 steps. Not too shabby. It's time to get back on the road now. We still got a long way to go. Whoo! Felt good though. A little bit sweaty. I should probably leave my sleeves inside out so they can dry out before I need to stop next. All right. Here we go. Here we go. And I walked Diesel actually before I left on my walk, so he got his walk in too, just around the parking lot here. Let's get back at it. All right, Karen, how much time we got left? You have 10 hours and 46 minutes of remaining drive time. I was talking to Karen, not you. I don't know what your name is yet. I still don't have a name for my e-log. What'd you say? I didn't hear you. How much time do I got left? You have 10 hours and 46 minutes of remaining drive time. All right, so we got a long way to go yet. We'll be driving into the night. Hopefully we don't hit any moose. I don't like driving at night in Northern Ontario, but what can you do? You're in Canada and it's winter time. It's always nighttime. The sun pops up just to say hello, and then before you know it, it's nighttime again. Where's the exit? I'm gonna go out this way. I think this is the exit over here. If I am not mistaken. So we have 1,747 kilometers to go yet by the end of tomorrow. 10 and three quarter hours available to us today yet. So we'll be driving pretty late. I want to get to around uh, uh, probably Wawa, Ontario. I'm gonna take Highway 17. I've been debating taking Highway 11 though. I mean, it's smoother up there. I don't know. We'd have to stop around Capus Casing then, or uh, oh, what's that other town where you turn south? 
Cochrane? Is that what it's called? Cochrane, Ontario? But there's not much parking there. Could always stop at Hearst, but Hearst is a little bit of a long drive down to Toronto for tomorrow. Eh, it looks like it's gonna be a decent day. Not too much traffic or not too much bad weather. I think we're gonna take Highway 17. We'll just we'll just go for that. here tonight. I haven't gotten stuck behind one slow driver. I've had very few people coming past me. It's dead out here. Oh, someone's coming towards us. Oh, life. Two. Right on. I'm not the only one on this planet. Look at you guys. Where are you going, boys? What you doing? Well, that way, okay. It's just been a dead highway today. I mean, it is a Saturday when I'm filming this, but still, usually there's still just tons and tons of trucks. Usually you get stuck behind at least one slow person every couple of hours, but I've, I've seen no one. I haven't been stuck behind one person all day. Though we still have eight and a half hours to go. Don't be confused, because just because the sun went down doesn't mean the day is over. It just means daylight hours are over. We're not even halfway through the day yet. We're here at the Flying J on the other side of uh, Thunder turn Bay. Right. No, no, I can't turn right. That's a one way. And it looks like everybody's parked their trucks in the pumps again, and all the pumps are all taken up. These guys are taking forever to turn. T -t 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 Today, Junior. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. You turning too? You turning too? You don't have your signal on. You know, if you had your signal on, I'd know whether or not you were turning or not. Oh, now he turns it on. Oh, his front signal's not working. Oh, okay. I'm gonna check that out. Oh, you guys are all gonna take pumps. Oh, those are supposed to be for me. I gotta wait for one more car. Pumps are straight ahead of us there. I need some diesel fuel. How do you guys say it in the States? Diesel? Diesel? We say diesel, like with a Z or a Z, however you guys pronounce that. Diesel. Which pump, which pump? Gotta figure out which one the driver didn't just park there and go inside. Oh, oh, that one, is, that, is he moving? Is he moving? Oh, he's doing his reefer by the looks of it. Well, what's this guy doing? What are you doing, buddy? Okay. Sure, yeah, wave at me. I don't know what you're waving for. I didn't stop for you. Well, technically I did a stop so you wouldn't hit me. That wasn't very nice. Okay, here we go. Here, 
me up some go-go juice. And we'll be on our way. It's getting a little colder out. What's the temperature outside? Oh, I'm a minus five. Never mind. Never mind, I'm just a wuss. They had to go and make this bridge so fancy with those bright lights that blind you, you know? This is the Nipigon Bridge we're coming up to. The only bridge, really, that connects the east and west. I tell you this every time we go through here, because that's an interesting fact, that we rely on only one bridge to get us across from one part of the country to the other. I mean, if you really wanted to split the country up, all you have to do is blow up this bridge. I'm just saying. Oh, well, look at this guy. Buddy. Buddy. Holy, your tires are going to fly off if you're going so fast. What's your hurry? What's your hurry, bud? Calm down. You got these nice bright lights that just blind you, pointed straight in your face. But they look nice, don't they? Yes, very nice. So I think these two guys are gonna go down Highway 11 by the looks of it. I'm staying on 17. I would usually take Highway 11. It's 50 kilometers or 30 miles further going there to where they're gonna go uh, when you're going to Toronto. But uh, it's all flat land, whereas this road I'm taking it has a lot more hills, but it's got a lot more scenery at the same time during the day. Well, we're gonna go this way. I don't know. I don't know. There's more stops on this road too, more passing lanes too. Besides, that guy's freaky. He just whipped down the hill there only 100 miles an hour. Glad he's going that way. Get away from me, buddy. Can you see it? Can you see it? Wah, wah. I am so glad we're here. I am so tired. I wanna go to bed. Okay, we gotta find a parking spot though. I was gonna stop in White River already, but there's absolutely not one parking spot in the whole town. So we were forced to come an hour further down to Wawa. I still have an hour left on my clock, an hour and one minute actually. But I don't wanna use it. Continue on this road for 220 kilometers. Uh, I don't wanna go to bed. Let's go in this way, I guess. See if we can find a place to park back here. Oh boy, potholes. Potholes, potholes. Wonderful. Found a spot. You have zero hours and 56 minutes of remaining drive time. Nope, don't need it. Oh man, that means we drove 12 hours today. We only got 1,014 kilometers. Yikes. Let's tell the good people over here that uh, we're done our day. How about that? Do some paperwork. All right, one second. Remember I keep telling you that this paperwork used to take like 15 minutes? Maybe not that long. It used to take a few minutes anyways. Now it's just a couple of buttons. No papers, no paper cuts, no little rulers. Making lines all over the place. You just go like this, like this, like that, and like this, and like that. Boom! It's all sent in. Then what you do, you, you have go over here. Hours and 55 minutes of remaining drive time. You go over here and you tell the people you're going to sleep. Just like that, the whole world, well not the whole world, everyone who needs to know knows that I'm sleeping right now. Or at least going back there. So thanks for watching today, everybody. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching all my videos. I make a new one pretty much every day, very close to every day. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you tomorrow. We got one more day's drive to Toronto yet. Oh boy. I'm gonna try to get going a little earlier tomorrow. Uh, the time is now 2 a.m. Eastern time. We started in Central time, now we're in Eastern time. Uh, so I can't get going until 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 a.m. I can start my pre-trip then, so that's that. I'm going to bed. 